So that's the total calories, right? Because some girls, uh, some of you girls are probably like, well, how many calories should I be eating? Okay. So after you get the total cows, what you're going to be eating per day. Okay. We're going to track this. You're going to track this. And, and, uh, typically I, I'll be able to show you right now how you don't have to track this the hard way. Okay. I'm going to show you how to make it easy and understandable. And so it's like, ah, oh, man, I don't want to track every like <laughs> merciful ounce of freaking food. I don't want to track everything. Um, and in fact, I don't really track anymore. You can, you can do the same thing that I'm going to do your, show you right now on how not to track and make it easy. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Cause I okay. don't like the track. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I got <laughs> to the point where I don't track anymore and I don't like tracking. So there's a template that I kind of use to kind of help me understand this. Love tracking. <laughs> huh? But I love tracking. Well, that's good. That's good. You, you're setting yourself up a good, a good, uh, a good foundation. But eventually, like I said, you're going to see a point where you're like, oh crap, this freaking sucks. Like we all go there. We're all, yeah. you're all, everyone's going to go through that. Trust me. Okay. Um, so, okay. So now we got this. Now what you do next is I like to set up my, my protein. Okay. And so now just remember this number. So 15, 12. Okay. Right. We want to remember that number okay. or rather let's make the, Let's make the, the fats, okay? And we're going to make the fats. Now we're going to say how many fats we should be taking in per day, okay? Now we will multiply this times 0.2. That's 20% of your calories, okay? Now just go with, bear with me, okay? You can't go, if you go anywhere less than 10% of your calories from, from facts, a lot of things happen hormonally that you don't want, okay? Mm hmm now you can un probably understand why people pay me to do this, right? Cause it sucks when you have to do it by yourself. Um, okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go 0.2 times that. So it gives you 302, right? Okay. You, you with me? Yeah. Steph, you with me? Yeah. I'm just doing it on my own, my own calculator. Okay. So yeah. Um, um, Sonia, what's up, Sonia? I'm teaching nutrition a little bit uh, about the, the, the nutrition of a six pack. Okay. The, like the nutritionally aspects of how to get like, um, to lose the weight and keep it off and actually how to like, cause the exercises are awesome. The working out is awesome, but you have to be nutritionally sound. And I'm showing like the step-by-step -step system that I use every single time, um, to help every single one of the girls when I'm making the programs, this is what I use every single time. Okay. Uh, I'm Jackie, watching, I'm listening and watching uh, what you're doing. Okay, perfect. It's going to get very technical. So just bear with me. Okay. So don't get too scared about the technical stuff. I'm, I'm recording it. So hopefully you guys can come back and be like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Okay. So 302, that's how many calories you see. I, I went, um, 15, 12 times 0.2. That's 20%. Okay. 0.2 is relative 20%, right? So I did 15, uh, 15, 12 times 0.2, which is 20%. And it comes out to 302. That's how many calories of fat you're going to take in a day. So calories of fat, okay, and if you know this, and you, hopefully you do, but if you don't, fat calories are way more than carbs and fats, almost double, or actually more than double. So what you're going to do is you're going to divide this number by nine, okay, because that's how many calories are in one gram of fat. Okay, so you're going to divide that by nine, and it's going to give you how many um, grams of fats you should be eating per day. So it should come out to, yep. So 33 grams of fat per day is what you're going to be taking in. So now you, now you, uh, you got your fats, you got your grams of fat per day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, now we go into protein. Okay. So protein's pretty simple. You want to go body weight in grams of protein. If not, just maybe a little bit less. Okay, so what I mean by that is this. So Carrie is 126. So she should get 126 grams of protein per day, ideally. Wait, I missed it. Okay, so how many protein, how many grams of protein you should get per day is one gram per gram of protein. One gram per gram of protein? Uh huh. So um, 126 grams of protein for a 126 pound person. Oh, okay, so one pound of protein, one ounce of protein per one pound. gram, one gram. One so gram. that's not not that's not grams in particular weighing though. Okay, this is a, it's a different ball game. I know it gets gets a little confusing there. 
So this is grams per day per, I'll, I'll mention right now. I'll tell you how I mean right now. Okay. So just bear with me. One gram of protein per gram of, of weight. I mean, per pound of body weight. Carrie, you with me? I'm doing it for you. So this one, yeah. we're using this as a framework. You're using your weight as a framework. Okay. So 126 uh, grams times four, because that's how many calories are in within proteins. Okay. Four grams uh, four calories are within one gram of protein. Okay. Does that, does that that's kind of like just standard. Okay. Okay. So like you can't mess with that. So like one gram of protein equals four calories. One gram of fat equals nine calories. One gram of carbs equals four calories. That's just like it. One gram of alcohol is seven calories. Okay. So like that's things that you cannot mess with. Those are thermodynamic rules of thermodynamics that you can't mess with. Now, I told you it's going to get a little sciencey, so bear with me. Don't fall asleep. This one is, uh, like I said, I wanted to make sure that you girls are, are, are set up and everything is like clear to go. Okay, so 126 times 4. So that's how many calories you're going to be taking in a protein per day. Okay, and I'm going to use this right now. What I mean by this, okay? So now we're going to use, we're going to use that number, that 504. Right, plus how you get five again? Uh, the 126, which is your body weight in grams, your body weight times four, which is a, a number that you don't change. Okay. Uh, Sonia, are you with me? Still tracking along? I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm watching okay. what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Um, and then um, Jackie's still here. We're good. You muted her. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, uh, Steph, you have a question? Yes. Um, so 129, I mean, one, 126 times 4 equals 504, but what are we calculating? We're going to get the carbs now. You got the protein, you got the fats. Now we have to get how many carbs you have left to eat, right? Okay. Carbs, got oh, it. Wait, the uh -huh. 504... That's how many calories and proteins? Yeah, that's how many calories in the grams of proteins you're going to be eating. So that's how many grams of protein you'll eat per day, right? Ideally. Okay. Okay. I know it seems like a lot, but trust me, just bear with me real quick. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to manipulate this. But first I have to get you frameworked and show you, okay, this is this, this is that. Get your base and then we play with it. That's where carb cycling comes into play. Okay. So Sorry, just one more mm -hmm. question. Sure. Say like look. you lose a pound or two, then you take that one times the four and you change that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're exactly right. Because uh, now it's a different uh, adaptive, what's called adaptive thermogenesis. Your calories change at a different level. So like at 126, your calories are going to be different than at 128 or 135. Right. Okay. And so that's why this one is great in terms of body fat percentage. Because if you're 126 and your body fat changes lower, then that means your calories, uh, that cal your calories become different because look, check this out. Um, so your calories will become different. See, because now you have higher total daily expenditure because you're stronger. Remember how they say when you get muscle, it burns more than fat? Yeah. Right. Okay, that's why. Because when you have a higher, when your body fat percentage is lower, and you're at the same weight, your energy goes up because you're stronger now because you have more calories to burn per day, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense now? Like that's why the concept burn fat while you sleep comes when you're lifting weights, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to kind of give you guys that clear like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Does that make sense now? Yeah, it does. Okay, so... So Carrie, as you, as you lose the weight, but you're increasing in like muscle, understand that the calories are going to change as well, which means if you're losing muscle or you're gaining muscle, your calories will actually be more. So you can actually keep your calories higher. You can keep them at the same level. Okay. So like your weight might change, your weight might go down, but your fat percentage might go like uh, go down as well. Right. Okay. So this is where it's kind of a little important to, for you to start tracking your body fat percentage. Um, mm -hmm. cause you're 126. Like how much more are you going to really going to lose? You know, like five, five pounds 
to get down to like 115, you really have to be really meticulous about counting and how, how many calories you're taking in and out, how many car, like how much sleep, how, like that's going to be a little more meticulous stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, at this point, I think you should probably do more of the weightlifting Tabata's hit, like just to increase that strength. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're right now at that point where it's like in between, you should be lifting weights to get stronger. You shouldn't right. be trying to lose too much weight. But I understand, you know, you're coming up for a for an event, so that's totally understandable. So, okay, let's get back to where we were. So, I'm going to multiply it times four, which brings me back to 504. That's how many calories per day for proteins we're going to take in, right? Okay, okay. We're, we're clear at that. Okay, now we go back to, we're going to go back from the beginning. Okay, now we have two, two, two numbers that we know. We know how many, we have three. We know how many total calories we're going to drink per, or eat per day to lose weight. Okay, so 15, 12. Then we know, um, we know how many calories we're going to take in of fats per day, which is 302, right? Yeah. Do you remember how we did that? Times two, uh, times 0.2 gave us 302 calories. Right. Okay. So we're going to minus 302. Okay. That's how, we're taking away the, the fat calories now. Now we have 1200, right? 1200 calories for the day left. So we have to still subtract the 500 calories from protein. So we're going to minus the 500 calories and we're going to be left with carb calories. Okay. So 705 calories per for carbs that we can take in per day. Okay. So now we have carb calories. So um, that, that equation is five, uh, 1512 minus fat calories, which is 302 minus protein calories, which is 504 is equal to, um, 705 calories of grams, uh, calories of, of cal of carbs. Okay. Remember when I said I was going to be a little technical and this is why yeah, uh, I, I got my math all wrong and all my numbers aren't jumbled up. Okay. We'll go through yours real quick. Uh, but, but I want to give you the, like the framework. So I'm doing this recorded video so that you guys can come back and be like, what the flip? Okay. I understand now. Okay. And I'll go through it. So like without any interruptions whatsoever, I will go with it right now in a, in, in a few seconds. So now we have our calories of carbs per day. Now what we're going to do is divide that by four. And that's how many grams of carbs we will be taking in per day. Okay. 176. Boom. So we got, so we got how many grams of carbs we should be taking in per day. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we have the framework. So check this out. Now we have Carrie's numbers. We have Carrie's numbers to work out to be, she's going to be eating 1500 calories per day. She's going to be uh, eating 170 grams of carbs, 125 grams of protein and 33 grams of, of fats per day. Now, all of you girls can probably agree with me while saying 33 grams of fat is really low and 178 grams of carbs is kind of hard to get. It's actually not, but um, we can even push this a little bit further back and forth. And now you have a framework to play with, okay? So we can take Carrie's grams of protein, we can take it back to 100 and push up her grams of fat to about 50, okay? Mm -hmm. So it, you literally, that's how I do the carb cycling. This is where, where like the little more technical side of my, my teaching comes in, you know? Like this is where I come in and kind of do that manipulation, um, carb cycling, intermittent fasting. This is where this, all this stuff comes into play. Cause now you have all you girls right now have what 90% or a hundred, probably like 99% of the world doesn't know. And what these fitness professionals don't want to teach you because it's hard. It's, it's time consuming and it's technical. So it's hard to understand. So let's go through it one more time. Just, uh, just for the recording. Okay. So for exact, if you want to lose the weight, it's easy to do it this way. So you can go to um, Koch McGardle formula if you know your body fat percentage. Otherwise, there's another formula called Cunningham. Cunningham formula. Okay, um, these formulas will tell you how much um, uh, calories you should be taking in per day. Holy Jesus! You see this? Like this is why it, this freaking sucks. Yeah, this is why it's so hard. This is why weight, weight loss is so hard because these freaking things are all over the place. 
Okay, I think this is the one, right? Yeah, these are, look, you see these like things right here? This is exactly what I'm doing right here. Like these numbers right here, these calorie things went in and out, blah, 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 blah. These are all the things that I'm using right here. So the easiest one I found is the Koch McGorda one. And that's the one I just showed you. I would actually just go with the Koch McGorda. Like don't, don't make this harder than what it is. Okay, Koch McGorda. You just find your body fat percentage. You can go to Gold's Gym to find it. Um, how much do you weigh? I'm 26. Okay, and it's going to give you that. And if you don't want to do it that way, you don't want to do the hard way, you do it exactly what I just showed you. Um, if you don't want to do it the hard way, you just do your body weight times 12, and that will give you like a base. Okay, that's going to give you your base right there. Boom, that's where you're going to start from. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply this, multiply this number by 0.2. Okay, don't ask me why, just, just bear with me right now. This is your calories per fats. Okay, now you got your calories per fats. That's 302. This is where you're going to um, write down the number. Okay, boom. I got 302 calories of fat. Now I'm going to divide this by, by nine because that's how many, one calorie of um, fats, like how many, okay, so one gram of, of fats is equal to nine, gram, uh, nine calories. Okay, so you're going to divide these calories by nine. That's going to give you how many grams of fats you should be taking in per day. Boom. You got 33 grams of fat. Now you know your fats. Boom. You're done with that. Okay. Now we go back and then we go your body weight. So right now we're using Carrie's example. She's 126 is your body weight in grams of protein. So now what we're going to do is multiply that by four. Okay. Four is the one gram of protein is equal to four calories. So we're going to do that. That's going to give us 504 calories. So um, we take the amount of calories from protein and from fats, and then we subtract it by the total cows. Okay. So 15, 12 minus the fats from the calories from fat, which is 302 minus the, um, the calories from protein. Okay. That's going to give us the calories for grams of carbs per day. So we got how many calories of, of, of carbs we should be taking in. Now we have to get how many calories are per gram. Okay, so one, cal uh, one gram of carbs is equal to four calories. Now, I'm meant, like I said, it's going pretty fast. It's going a little hard. Um, but please understand that this is kind of like the technical part. If you really want to get down to the really low body for percentages, you have to understand these things, okay? And, and not necessarily have to understand them, but um, if you're going to pay for my coaching, it's probably a good idea that you... Um, you understand this. And if you don't want to understand this, you can pay me instead. So um, what you do from here is you're going to divide this by four. And that's your amount of grams of carbs per day. So now you got your four numbers. You got your calories, which is 1512. How many grams of carbs you should be taking in? Boom, you got 176. How many grams of protein you should be taking in? That's 126. And how many fats you should be taking in? So that's 33 grams. So there you go. That's Carrie's numbers. Those are her macros. Those are how she calculates her macros. Okay. So, uh, now we have to set it up in a, in a terms of like a meal plan, right? How do we set that up? It's a very simple concept. 1500, right? So we break that up. Um, how many meals do you like per day, Carrie? Like how many um, meals can you do per day? I do three. Okay. Three. So we divide it by five, uh, by, by three, 1500 divided by three, you get three big meals for 500 calories each. Right? Is that fair? It's kind of fair to say, right? 1,500 divided by three, you said? Yep. So that's three big meals with 500 calories. Okay. So Carrie, all you have to do is you go to a restaurant and say something that's around 500 calories. If you don't How want- How do I know I'm getting like my percentages? Yeah. Well, if you're going out to a restaurant, you're not going to get your percentages, period. Well, I, yeah, right. So like they're, they're not going to, you're not going to tell them like, Hey, I need, I need, uh, what did we say? Uh, I need uh, 15 grams of, of fats for this meal. I need, uh, about 50 grams of carbs for this meal. Like they're not going to tell you any <laughs> of that stuff. You know, you're, you're not going to tell them that and they're going to, they're going to be like, what the heck are you talking about? Okay. So the easiest thing is to tell them, uh, calories. Okay. So if you're really trying to get down to, um, one, 120, right? If you're going to get down to 120, 
ideally you don't want to be going out to eat for this stuff if you're if you're too worried about the macros now calorie percentages wise like for calories yes it is a lot has to do a lot to do with um, right. calories in calories out okay so the the metabolic rate like thermogenesis does not change from person to person mm -hmm. okay so like if you get 500 calories per meal you're gonna lose the weight period end of story right does that make sense and so like now um what you can do to make this easier you know when you're going out to eat all of you girls know it's not hard to get fats and carbs when you go out to eat it's not hard what's hard to get is a protein so why don't you just do already with it so in the morning you get your protein in the evening you get your protein or whenever you go to lunch um like the the control the controllables and the uncontrollables you don't worry about them right am i is that fair to say girls yeah yeah, Steph, you still with me? You got went quiet. Oh no, I'm just I was just trying to figure out macros. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you right now your macros right now. But um, so control the controllables. So Carrie, what she's gonna do is she's gonna try to hit her protein um, calories within the day. Um, and if she goes out to eat, she doesn't go out to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know that. Do you, Carrie? No, no, no. Right? I'm sure you cook at home. I know you cook at home for. Um, for one, I know you cook at home for one of the meals, right? Actually, I've been doing like trying to do all the meals, but lunch is just kind of hard for me. Okay. So I'm then perfect. Home, Don't so, worry about them lunch then. Know. So we'll use the lunch to make up the carbs and the fats. Okay. So the protein, um, you can get it in the morning or rather you can get the protein at night because in the morning, it's hard to get 500 calories in the morning. You're not hungry all the time. So here's how you redistribute, right? So instead of that, you get the 200 calories in the morning or get like something small, 250 calories. And then all like what's, what's 250 calories? Um, my, you can get a Greek yogurt. This is how it's so easy. That makes it so easy. The, like uh, I have the cereal that I talk about, the, the cereal you can do easily. You just put a cup of almond milk with uh, a cup and a half of uh, fiber one cereal. And that's kind of like, I think that's 170 calories. Plus you drink some of the, if you drink the morning mojo, that's another 70 calories right there. That's 250 calories. Boom. You're done. Right. How, and it's how fullness. How many calories is in your chocolate peanut butter protein? Um, I want to say it's 170 as well. Cause I if I'm not mistaken. Okay, perfect. You're good then. So like if that fills you up, you're good. Lunch, you just eat your normal lunch and then dinner, focus on your protein. Take off a little bit of the carbs cause you don't like to eat carbs in the evening anyways. I don't like to eat carbs, period. Well, it, the, the carbs and stuff is, is relatively like in, unimportant right here. Um, calories is, is the, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to get at. And um, right. like I want you to get your protein in because the protein is, not, is hard to get in. The carbs and the fats are easy to get anywhere. So like if you say you can't get your carbs or your fats in, I know you're lying because I can get carbs and fats like in a second if I wanted to. I can go straight to Walmart right now and be – in every single aisle and I'll find carbs and fats every single aisle. So um, do you see how we do this now? So like in the morning, you just take your morning, you drink your chocolate peanut butter one. Then the, the afternoon, you get something less than 500 calories. And then the evening, you get something from 700. Uh, so 500 to 700 calories and you're done. Okay. Right? It's like, okay. it's literally that simple. And you just focus on the protein. So a protein shake with um, a protein shake, maybe with, with um, mixed vegetables. Okay. And sweet potato. That's your carbs right there. And then um, some avocado. Boom. Omelets. Omelet. I don't know if you would eat. On, I don't know. Some girls have different um, like preferences. I don't know if you would eat l l uh, breakfast and dinner. Oh, I do. I eat breakfast with dinner. Omelette is like an omelet is like a breakfast. I don't know. I'm gonna show my screen so I can yell at you girls. So is that is that making sense? Like all 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 of us in here, uh, Carrie, Steph, uh, Sonia, Jackie, you can jump in real quick and and throw in some of your two cents. What about your Mojo drink? Does that how many calories is in that? Seventy. Because I gotta factor that in too. Do you drink it? Yeah. Oh, you drink that on top of the 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 shake? 
Well, I do the mojo on my way to work out, and then I do the shake oh. once I get ready. Okay. So okay. it's like couple. It's about three hours difference. Okay. Yours? Why is yours 150, Steph? Greens and the honey. Like it's. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing wrong. Oh, why? I I guess I don't factor in the honey because I don't take the honey anymore. Oh, Not because. Why? Because it's expensive and it's hard to find. Oh, so is, yeah. are we losing anything by putting the honey? Not putting the honey in there? Uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's honestly, it, it helps with uh, like if you have diabetes and so on and so forth. But like, I just put it in there because it was helping me at the time. But I was like, dang, this is freaking expensive. Because it's 35 bucks for like uh, 500 or something. Um, whatever it is. But it's like 35 bucks for that Manuka honey. So I'm like, eh, never mind. I'm sorry? I get mine at TJ Maxx for $12. Yeah, well, I don't like TJ Maxx. Just kidding. Um, oh, I haven't found any here. I find them like at the Gucci Bees, and they're super expensive. Uh, Terry Joe's is actually uh, has, uh, there's like around 12, 15 bucks as well. Okay, well, if you get it, then that's perfectly fine. Um, and that should keep you, keep you um, fairly full, okay? So that, that morning mojo should keep you fairly full because it's full of, it's full of stuff that, that keeps your intestinal tract, like, in track, okay? And what I mean by that is it, it's full of fiber, which allows you to, um, well, number one, keep you in track, like, in terms of, like, eating because it slows your digestion and also slows your blood, uh, blood sugar from going up too fast. Um, and it also keeps you fuller longer because fiber helps you stay full. Um, so you get like a three for one. Okay. And that's why I recommend at least drinking that in the morning. If not my morning mojo, you know, at least drinking the greens with the psyllium husk. Is that fair? Um, I can't hear you. I said I'm going to on a trip for all of next week, so um, meal planning is. I can't hear you again. I said that I'm going on a trip for a whole week, so meal planning is going to be very difficult. Okay. So I will try my hard to keep everything because I know that most of the most everything we're going to be eating out okay well then plan ahead go intermittent fast then fast your way through the through the day and then don't eat until you eat okay i'll try you, you don't have to eat every second of every day you can go out to eat when they go out to eat and eat uh, yeah okay. it's, it's honestly not that hard to do that like because you're going to be in the mix of things you're going to forget to eat like that's not going to be on the front of mind you're going to be like let's go eat let's go eat let's go eat you're going to be like, hey, we have a lot of things to do. You know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And like eating is back of mind. But just understand when you get in front of a situation, make the best decision in the worst situation. Okay? Okay. Or at least attempt to, you know, like don't just throw up your hands in the air and be like, oh, it's going to be till Monday. Because you're going to take two steps back and then say, oh, Daniel, I screwed up my whole diet. And I'm going to be here like trying to clean up the mess. And I'm going to be like, no, I told you. Like make the best decision or at least minimum at least have me in the back of your head thinking like, eh, maybe, you know what, Daniel would probably say, yeah, do I really want the body or not? You know? Yeah. No, that's fine. Also, another thing I was going to ask you, you said that we eat different when we're on our period. Okay. So um, we um, get more calories in, right? Correct. So when you're on your period, um, you, uh, you're typically, because you're going through that cycle, you have your met your metabolic goes up a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Don't go crazy though. Like, don't say, um, Oh, I can eat 500 calories extra every day of the week because I'm, I'm going through my menstrual cycle. No, it's literally like, like a hundred calories. Okay. So it's like a piece of chocolate extra. Okay. But chocolate's okay. Chocolate's perfectly fine. Yeah. You can eat chocolate. In fact, I would say save your calories. If you're going to do like I do the carb cycling. So if you have gone through the, like, uh, Carrie's done the carb cycling before when I've talked about it. She just didn't really know how it was termed, but it's carb cycling. Okay. So take away carbs and then re input them at the end of the week when typically when you start to eat more. 
um, because it's easy for you to like stop eating calories Monday to Friday, but for Saturday and Sunday, it's really, really hard to stop eating calories. So what I do is I kind of already address it in the front end. I take out the calories from the front and then I reload them on the back. So it all balances out. Can you kind of explain that? Cause I want, I want to start doing that again this week. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't actually remember what I did before. Right. So, um, so what Carrie would do before is, um, I, I showed her like kind of like what to eat in the beginning. And then at the end of the week, she was kind of just like, Oh, well, all right, let me just kind of lay off a little bit. And she does, you're all, all you girls are going to do this without, with like every girl tells me, no, I don't do that. And then at the end of the week, like four weeks later, you hadn't lost any weight. And I'm like, what happened? And you're like, well, I try to eat everything healthy. And then I see everything, one of your calories and you're like, um, yeah, well, I messed up there. I messed up there. So I just account for it anyways. Okay. I just account for it. So what I do is you take away the calories. So let's say for example, Carrie's at 1500, right? So Carrie's going to work out hard. So what you're going to do, Carrie, is you would go 1300 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. And what that means is instead of having a big dinner, you'll have a lighter dinner. Okay. So remember we were taking away the, taking away the carbs at night on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we're adding them back in Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Do you remember we were doing that? Yeah. So I was telling you to take away the carbs um, at the end of the night and then add them back in throughout the, uh, the additional parts of the, the week so that we're re-upping uh, leptin so that it doesn't seem like your body is losing weight. You're telling your brain, your hypothalamus not to lose weight. It's like, oh, I'm not losing weight. Okay. Mm-hmm. and uh, it, it keeps your metabolism going. So that's what you do. Instead of having the big lunch, instead of having the big dinner, you have the small dinner, the small dinner Monday through Wednesday when you're not hungry because you're typically not hungry Monday through Wednesday. You're like, I can do this. It's good. I'm back on track. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday when stress levels are going crazy. The end of the week is coming. You know, you're just like, oh, I got bombarded by work, you know, it, and it happens to you too, Steph, and you too, Sonia, and you too, um, Jackie. Like, Monday is like, I'm getting back on track. Tuesday, I'm back on track. Wednesday is like, oh, crap, here's the end of the, here's the middle of the week. I can't just, I just cannot wait till Thursday and Friday, you know? And it happens to every single one of us, no matter what industry we're in, right? It doesn't matter if you're a, a stay-at-home mom or you're an entrepreneur with your, own, uh, with your own hours. This is how it works. People have this. It's just innately us. So what you, what I do is I take away the calories or the, rather the carbohydrates in the beginning of the week. And then we redo them. We re put them into the end of the week, push them to the little bit later on in the week. And, um, it helped Carrie lose the 25 pounds in 30 days. So, um, I know for sure without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to help her lose the last six pounds. So that means no carbs on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Or less. Mm -hmm. Less. Be very weary about what, uh, like, don't, uh, I never promote no carbs, like never. So just less carbs. At least at, at this point in my life, like from what my knowledge has told me, I've done the, the no carb stuff and it sucks. So less carbs. Yes. But, um, taking out completely eliminating carbohydrates is not a good idea, period. Um, so like, okay. yeah, like just a little bit less, like instead of having, eight ounces of, of sweet potato I have four ounces right like do you see how that mm -hmm. difference is like it's mm -hmm. a minute difference but it makes a big radical difference long term or rather two weeks from now okay okay yep Steph, sonia um jackie you've been a little quiet i know i've been a little more uh technical on this one and it wasn't about abs at all it's about nutrition but i want you girls to understand how like this nutrition world works yeah i i get it i'm just a little still a little confused Okay. On the numbers, some of the numbers, because I, I think the way I did it, they're all wrong. Okay. I actually had to crunch my numbers again because I uh, lost um, uh, now eleven to twelve pounds, and I'm stuck on that. Uh, so and my pounds are not going uh, down, and you already know that I since March ten, I totally changed my the way I eat. Mm -hmm. So I don't need dairy, I don't need sugar, I don't need you know. Uh, you know, bread or any kind of carbs like that, right? right. Um, so, but, uh, so now my pounds are not coming down. Mm, mm -hmm. But now that I listen to what you're saying, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a guacamole addict. 
I don't know what to do with it, but then <laughs> I eat the guacamole like every day, which probably I have to cut it. Um, and the reason why I'm eating because I cannot have any kind of dressing, and that's my dressing. That's my, my mayonnaise, that's my mustard, that's my ketchup, that's my everything. So uh, that's my go-to thing. So I'm not sure, like, how can I, should I cut it or should I let it go? Because, again, I don't pretty much, uh, you know, I don't really eat any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, things that, you know, regular people eat, like on a sandwich or anything like that. So. Okay. Uh, the same principle applies. The same principle applies. So understand... Like the principle we just talked through with Carrie, it applies to you. It applies to vegans. It applies to ketos, um, ketosis. It applies to every intermittent fasting. The same principle applies because um, energy is energy. It's neither created nor destroyed. It's just transferred, okay? It's a law of thermodynamics. It's something that I cannot change. You cannot change. No one can change. But um, the, uh, the way to get to the particular goal, it always changes, right? Ketosis is the new one. Uh, vegans is another one. Um, intermittent fasting is another one. Carb cycling is another one. All of them are, are basically a different vehicle to the same destination, right? And what I'm telling you guys is, or girls um, is, a, is the, the no bull way to get there, right? Like all of these different things are just a vehicle to get to the, it's kind of like, uh, okay, so you girls know about click funnels, right? So it's kind of like ClickFunnels, right? ClickFunnels is the vehicle to sell your products, right? It doesn't matter if you, um, or rather like it doesn't matter if you're using lead pages, if you're losing uh, Kajabi, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a new vehicle to sell the same thing, to do the same thing, the same out, like to make more money, right? That's the idea, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't matter like what you're doing. It's the, the idea that it's like the same... Same destination, different vehicle. So what, um, what, what um, Sonia needs to do right now is we can walk through your numbers really quickly. I can walk through your girl's numbers right now since we're already on here and nobody else is jumping on here. Uh, so Sonia, you and I will go on the numbers right now and then you'll go back to your, um, like what you need to do and say like, okay, this is my, uh, I'm, I'm addicted to avocado, but I don't want to change that, right? Because there's some things that you're non-negotiables. Like for me, it's like pizza. I don't want to give up pizza. So I have to find ways to, like fit pizza into my eating schedule or rather fit myself to be uh, allowing pizza into my life. Cause if I totally tell, tell myself you have to get pizza out of your life. I'm basically telling myself I'm not myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, uh, like, that so, totally so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It totally makes sense. Right. Um, yeah, so if I like, tell I, you, I'm not myself without, uh, without guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> right. If I tell you not to eat guacamole, it's like, um, dude, shut up. Like, I'm going to go tell someone, I'm going to go find someone that's going to teach me how to eat guacamole the right way. Right. Yeah. Like if I tell you not to do something that you already do, you're going to be like, no, forget you. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to find someone that's going to teach me how to do it so that I can fit that in. Um, so, so here's what, here's what we're going to do real quick. Okay. So we're going to go kind of like, um, like really fast, I'm going to make your numbers and you're just going to tell me your weight. And then, um, and I'm going to tell you how to do this right now, uh, or rather I'm going to do it for you. And then we're going to go back in here and you're going to look at this, uh, this video and you're going to do it for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Steph, let's yep. go with you real quick since she's, she was kind of on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So we're going to go with Steph. I got about eight more minutes. You on there, Steph? Yes, I'm on here. Okay, so uh, wait. Let's go. We're going to go shotgunning. Okay. Wait. Hello. I'm here. Can you throw hear me your weight. Throw me your weight. I can't hear you. Oh, okay, it's 129. 129. Okay, so uh, we're going to use that same framework, and we're always going to go kind of back to you need to lose weight. So if we just look at it now, your calories are almost equivalent to Carrie's. Okay. So I would even just follow Carrie's since hers is a little deficit. So you're going to be just in like 30 calorie deficit. It's not that big of a difference. You're going to lose the weight. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I just, I, can you just go over the formula one more again? That's, that's fine. I, I would call her. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, okay. So, okay. So now we have the calories. So what we're going to do right here, you're going to multiply this times. We're going to get the fat calories first. 
So multiply this times 0.2. And like I said, you can push up or down. Um, when you're doing fat calories, I would go as far up as 0.3, as far down as 0.18. Okay, so four, 50, 40, I mean, so plus times 4.2. 2. 0.2, yeah. And that equals? That equals fat calories. Fat calories, okay. So then you divide that by 9. Divide that by 9. Okay. That's how many grams of fats you should be taking in per day. That's your macros for fats. And that equals my macros 34.4. That equals my fat. Okay, that's your fat right there. Boom. We got 34. Okay, so remember that's 309 for calories, fat calories. Okay, you're taking numbers. Are you taking the numbers real quick? Yes, I am. Okay, so now we go 15. For, okay, so you're 129. 129 times 4 because now we're getting calories for protein. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we're just going on the premise that you're going to eat 129 grams of protein per day. You don't have to get 129 grams of protein, but that's the ideal world. In the ideal world, you would hit your perfect macros, but you're not. So staying as close as possible is totally fine, okay? So what we're going to do is 516. So now you have 516 and 309, okay? If we add those up and minus that by 1540, so this is protein calories plus fat calories, which is 309, will give us um, fat and protein calories. Now we subtract that by the total amount of calories per day, 1548. That's going to give us the calories per grams of pro, uh, calories per um, carbohydrates per day. Okay. So that's going to give us the calories for um, carbohydrates per day. Then last step is divide that by four. And now we have your grams of carbs, your grams of protein, and your grams of fat per day to lose weight. Okay, so it's 180 for you, um, Steph. Your 180 grams of, of carbs, 129 grams of protein, and uh, 39 grams of carbohydrate uh, fat. So I think it was 309 divided by no. So 309 divided by nine. So you're at 34, 34. Okay. So those are your, those are your macros right there, Steph. And uh, if you feel like you're deficit, like if you feel like you're tired or something, take out one, take out one and play with it a little bit. Okay. And that's why uh, this is like the base. Okay. So now we got your numbers, right? Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah, I'm typing stuff. Okay. But you got the numbers, right? Like you got how to do it. I know I, I went really fast on that part. Um, and like I said, I was going to go yeah. kind of, huh? Yeah, that's why I was like going like, uh -huh, I'm trying to type it as, as fast as you can. No worries. I'll, I'll, I'll write it up right now. I'll write it up and I'll give you guys the like formula so you can just plug it in. Like yeah. you just put in this number, this number, this number, and then I'll give you the other ones. In fact, I'll make a formula so you guys can just put in numbers and then just be like, okay, this is what it is. Yes, that and would be <laughs> yeah, that, I think that would be so much easier. It would have saved us tons of, it would have saved us an hour. Um, but I think it's definitely beneficial for you to understand where that premise is coming from, like why I'm doing the numbers that way. Uh, so you can understand how it, how it works so correctly. Okay. So lastly, um, Sonia, real quick. Um, I am 137 pounds. 137? Yes. Okay. So times 12. 12, uh, 60, 44. Yes. Yep. So you did your numbers, right? Uh -huh, times, yes. Uh, so for you, Sonia, I know you eat a lot of more fats. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to redistribute the numbers. So girls, this is an important lesson to take, take note of real quick. So mm -hmm. since Sonia eats more fats already, typically, so we're going to go as high as 30, uh, 30%, just for my numbers, right? There are people that do the ketogenic diet, which mm -hmm. would give them, um, you would go times point. So if you're doing the ketogenic diet, it would be 1644 times 0.75, right? And that would be that would be your, your grams of uh, fats per day, right? That would, if you're on a ketogenic diet, that's how many fats you should be taking in per day. Um, okay. But if you're not, this is what we're doing here. Okay. I'm on candida diet. <laughs> you are on the ketogenic diet. Uh, I'm actually candida diet. It's called candida and I'm also oh. doing intermittent fasting, which means I eat only twice a day. Um, so that's what okay. I'm doing. 
Okay, not really you, keto, uh, but I don't actually eat bread and and diet, uh, dairy and stuff like that. So and sugar. But you eat you eat uh, vegetables and uh, vegetables, fruit. Yes. You eat fruits. Okay, so then you are you're not young. You're not on keto. So this this is uh, same principle applies to you as well because you're mm -hmm. not on keto. So okay. time. Uh, so so it's 1644 mm -hmm. times point three. Oh shoot. Times point three, and this is a little bit higher of fats, right? So it's four four ninety three. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're you're with me, Sonia? Yes, I'm here. I'm right okay. now. Uh, and then we divide this by nine. That's how many fat calories. So write this down. Uh huh. I'm writing. Because I'm because I'm gonna ask you for this number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, right there. Okay, it's gonna be fifty four calories. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I mean uh -huh. fifty four grams of car of fats per day. Okay, fats. Okay. Okay. So what was that number again? F Five forty eight, right? Uh, fifty four point eight. Yes. No, no, but the oh, fifty four point eight. Fifty four point eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're one thirty seven. Now yeah. you see how um, she's a she's a little bit um, like 137 calories is hard to get uh, for a girl. Okay, 126 is not hard to get. 130 is not hard to get, but 137 seems like it's a little harder. Um, but we're still gonna try it. Okay, so we're still gonna try it using the premise that I'm talking about. Okay, so 137 times four. Okay, so that's 548. 548. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. fifty four point eight. That was the number of fats per day. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Plus five forty eight. Right. Calories yeah. per protein. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Okay. So now we multi we subtract that by sixteen forty four, and that gives us calories of carbs per day. This is including um, fibers, uh, uh, greens, and fruits. Okay. So we're gonna divide that by four, and this is your how many carbs you should be taking in per day? One hundred fifty. Mm -hmm just above the ketogenic, uh, particularly uh, grams of, of um, below that, you would get into ketoacidosis or something like that. I don't know. But okay. uh, basically, those are, your, those are your four numbers right there. So it's proteins, carbs, and fats. So your proteins are 137, your fats are 54, and your uh, carbs are 150. Now, if you feel like you're getting too many carbs, you push up your protein. Or you feel like you're getting too many proteins, push down your protein, push up your fats. But I would leave the carbs kind of like right there, if not go mm -hmm. up to 200. Okay. Okay. So those okay, are your that, numbers that, right that there. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So okay. fruits will stay in there. Um, guacamole kind of feels in the fat part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh so, gosh, yeah. So um, one, one big fruit of, uh, of avocado is about 250 calories. So, oh, my gosh. Hang on. Hang on. So if I want to lose 10 pounds, will that mean yep. double up exercises? Uh, yeah, so you don't want to double down on exercises. You just want to make sure that um, you're staying consistent with these kind of uh, calories and macros. If you can stay consistent with this, I promise you will lose the 10 pounds. Okay. Um, now, exercise, uh, I would do the ab workouts that I promoted that we talked about and uh, just do week three into week four. That's what I was going to tell you. Just do week three into week four, push it over, and um, you just go back to step one, week one, for uh, like for increasing. Okay, so like okay. you get this done, then you go back to week one and do week one to week four again. Like that's the exercise okay. to 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 turn to tone up and firm up the the abdominal area. Yeah, so it's gonna come down to a lot of a lot of like. Uh, and now I, I know it looks like it's super hard, but it's so simple. Like I just showed you how I made Carrie's meal plan like, like this, like in an instant, right? Yep. And that's mm -hmm. going to be her, her meal plan right there. You see, uh, like remember Steph, when I was talking about like meal plans don't have to be hard. It just has to be so stupid simple that it's like, wow, you, thank you for just telling me where my keys were. Right. It was just, it's not, it's, it doesn't have to be very meticulous calorie counted and all that stuff. Which um, I like that I can that you count calories because it's easier for me to see where 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 the where you're lacking or or needing to put in effort. But like when you put it that simple, it's like okay, that makes sense. Now I know my macros, I know my calories, I know my 
step, my steps. This is where I need to put my frameworks. This is where I need to put my, my calories at like, okay. So the way I set it up for Carrie, it's like Carrie doesn't eat a lot of calories in the morning. She eats her, her normal uh, meal for the first, for, for lunch. And then at the end of the day, she'll, she'll take out calories in the beginning of the week and then add them back in on, on dinner and the later, later on in the week. So she keeps consistent the, the lunch. So that's the uncontrollable one. And uh, she keeps everything else controlled. So it's very, and so like, that's kind of how I keep her within her macros and keep her losing weight. And that's how you're going to use it as well, Steph. It is saying like, okay, so if I'm going to do two meals per day, I'm going to eat two meals per day. That's the thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So like, uh, it doesn't have to be a meal plan per, ta- is per se, but it has to be a, a, uh, a strategic approach. And this is my strategies. These are my strategies every single time. When I help myself get down to 6% body fat, when I help JR get down to his body fat percentage, when I help uh, Carrie, when I help every single one of my coaching clients get really low body fat percentage and get rid of like love handles and stuff, it's like this. I'm sorry? Yeah, I want to get rid of my love handles. Stay consistent then. I will. And I you have you should be super proud of me i have been super consistent i have been walking my ten thousand. steps. i'm walking as we speak right now <laughs> you make it seem like I, I i'm not proud of you i'm so proud of you girls like i stay very active in the group and i encourage others and you're amazing you know that you girls are amazing you girls are freaking amazing like i can't even oh, uh, 